Everyone knows black people were enslaved and used in plantations and homes as servants, but a chapter of slavery is often hidden, which revolves around how white women treated black male slaves. It's quite shocking what white women wanted from black male slaves, holding deep controversial desires. Some felt lust for the black men while others had sadistic desires. But what did they do to black male slaves, keeping what they did hide from their white husbands? Welcome to a new episode of Black Culture Diary, a channel where we talk about less known and hidden black history, culture, arts, and lost civilization. We scrutinize history here to bring the black culture back on the surface again. We would like to thank you, the members of our community who have been watching our videos and supporting us. For those who are new, we encourage you to join our community in supporting and building a strong black history education medium. In this episode, we will tell you how black male slaves were abused by white women and used for pleasure. Let's get started. Marie Delphine McCarty was born in New Orleans on March 19, 1787. She was born into a family that knew the taste of luxury like no other. Her father, Louis Bartholomew de McCarty, was no ordinary man. He carried the esteemed title of Chevalier in the Distinguished Royal and Military Order of St. Louis. The McCarty family, you see, had a deep-rooted connection to the military, a heritage that was woven into the very fabric of their identity. But this wasn't just any family. The McCarthys owned a vast estate that covered a staggering 1,344 acres. Their grand land was spread between the territories of Bartholomew, right beside the illustrious Count Pierre-Philippe Mandeville de Margini. It was a place where Marie Delphine McCarty grew up, her life flourishing in privilege and prominence. Yet in this opulence, a darker truth loomed over society. Yes, the institution of slavery. You see, it was a time when well-to-do families, just like the McCarthys, held black slaves as part of their households. Slavery wasn't just a passing notion. It was deeply ingrained in the culture of the southern states, spanning from the 17th to the 19th centuries. What's more, it wasn't only culturally accepted, but even given the stamp of approval by the government's laws. This grim recognition from the legal system made slavery an integral part of the very heartbeat of the antebellum South's economy and society. In this world where wealth and power intertwined with cruelty and injustice, wealthy families who inherited slaves did so through various channels. Sometimes, slaves were passed down from one generation to another, like treasured artifacts that carried a twisted legacy. Marriages between the elite classes often led to the transfer of these slaves a practice that further solidified the troubling norms within high society. It's as if these human beings were mere commodities, tools to elevate a family's social status and financial prosperity. However, within this tangled web of historical reality, each enslaved person's story was different. Some bore the weight of grueling labor on plantations, their lives consumed by backbreaking work under the harshest conditions. Others found themselves serving within the grand households of the wealthy, offering a range of services. During this period, the story of Madame LaLaurie emerges. Her story tells a chilling and unsettling tale, a dark chapter that reveals the depths to which some individuals could sink. Her actions serve as a haunting reminder of the past's brutality, a chapter in history that still casts a long shadow over our understanding of humanity's darkest moments. In the early 1830s, Madame Delphine LaLaurie seemed like a respectable person on the outside. But behind the walls of her mansion, something dark was happening. She was treating her black male slaves in the most horrible ways, doing things that are beyond imagination. Even though she looked like a proper member of society, the truth about her was really disturbing. One day in 1834, a fire broke out in her mansion. People from the neighborhood rushed to help, but what they found inside was shocking. Black male slaves were there, and they had been subjected to terrible torture and even murder. Some of them were barely alive with awful injuries, while others were already dead and decaying. The scene was horrifying, with eyes gouged out, skin flayed, and mouths filled with awful things. This showed just how cruel and sadistic Madame LaLaurie was. She became known as one of the most brutal and heartless women in history. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Stories were going around about the torture chamber in her mansion. People whispered that there were more than 100 dead bodies up there. These scary tales painted a picture of how brutal she really was, and she became a symbol of cruelty and evil. The attic became a symbol of unspeakable horror, forever associating Madame LaLaurie with terrible deeds. Before she turned to such cruelty, Madame Delphine LaLaurie was respected in society. 
She got married multiple times and had children acting like a normal person. But the truth about how she treated her black male slaves shattered that image. She came from a well-off white family in New Orleans, so her social status was high. But when her inhumane treatment of black male slaves came to light, it revealed the darkness inside her. Inside her mansion, she treated her enslaved workers horribly, without any care for their dignity or humanity. One terrible example was when she chained a 70-year-old cook to a stove, making them live in captivity and suffer. This all showed just how cruel Madame Delphine LaLaurie could be. She turned human lives into things she could torment and hurt. The house where all these dreadful things happened still stands today, a haunting reminder of the horrors that took place there. But that's not it. White women did not only have sadistic desires for their black male slaves. Rather, they also had sexual desires and relations with them. While many black women were sadly exploited by white men, there were fewer cases of white women forming relationships with black male slaves. These connections were influenced by many things like racism, power imbalances, and the way society worked back then. It's important to realize that these relationships came in different forms. Some were based on mutual feelings and real emotions, while others were the result of manipulation or even force. Because of the strong racial divides and the ideas people had at the time, these unions were seriously frowned upon and even punished under the rules of society and the law. This made many people keep their relationships secret to avoid being rejected by society or getting into legal trouble. Hence, nobody can tell what Madame LaLaurie did with those black male slaves besides torturing them. These relationships were far from simple and had many different sides to them. Sometimes white women and black male slaves formed emotional bonds, especially when enslaved men worked closely in the homes of white families Real feelings could develop that went against the rules and expectations for women of that time. In the context of the prevailing culture, having a romantic connection with a black slave might have been seen as a form of rebellion, a way of pushing back against the strict social norms that controlled how people interacted. And of course, strong feelings of attraction played a part too, leading these relationships to develop outside the boundaries of what was considered normal. But these relationships faced challenges. When pregnancies happened as a result of these relationships, People often went to great lengths to hide the evidence. The shame attached to these relationships and the potential legal consequences made people do extreme things to keep things secret. Some heartbreaking choices were made, like leaving babies to be found or even intentionally causing their deaths to erase the evidence. In some cases, babies born from these relationships were secretly given to other families or individuals to be raised as their own, far away from the eyes of society. And if a child could pass as white, they might be kept within a white family their true background hidden away. But why did white women have relationships and sexual desires for black male slaves when they knew it was considered illegal? Well, the motives behind these women's decisions to engage in such relationships likely varied from situation to situation. Some may have been driven by boredom or unfulfilled desires, seeking a sense of fulfillment in their lives. Yet when we delve deeper, we find a compelling argument that these encounters might have offered a way for these women to reclaim a measure of power that often eluded them in other aspects of their lives. For example, white women could establish sexual relationships with black male slaves but could still keep them under their power. That was not the case with their husbands who had authority over their wives. In this way, white women were feeling authority they never had. So sexual relations with black male slaves grew. Historian Elizabeth Fox Genovese points out that despite efforts to control female desires, they still existed. And white women, much like their male counterparts, engaged in relationships outside of or before marriage, although less frequently. It's worth noting that these relationships might not have been as frequently noticed or documented as they occurred. While the transgressions of white men were perhaps expected, the notion of a white woman having a relationship with a black man might not have been as readily considered. In cases where suspicions arose, an upper-class woman could exploit societal stereotypes and claim rape to protect herself, shifting blame onto the black man. For white women whose relationships with slaves were exposed, the consequences were often dire. Isn't it true that no faction of European society was free from slavery, including white women? Did you know about these abuses and exploitations of black male slaves, especially by white women? Let us know your thoughts on this. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.